What's up guys, my name is Khan and we're back today with more Railroads Online. Joined with Peyton this time. What's up Peyton, how's it going? Welcome oh, back. It's going good, how about you? I'm doing good. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna talk about some bridges today. Peyton's been working on some bridge stuff. He's super excited to talk to me about some bridges. So, uh, in doing that, and you know, in lieu of all the bridges, I figured we would go to the coal mine, because that's the route I have with the most bridges. That's, Sounds awesome. That's, that's all I got. It's, so we're gonna, we're gonna take a, a load of 10 rails and 20 beams because that is the proper one to two ratio. I actually only have like 13 rails at the smelter, so that's that's pretty much all we could do anyway. Um, do you want to drive? Do you want me to drive? Does it matter? Do you care? Uh, I'm fine driving if you want me to drive. Yeah, that's fine. You can drive. We should be good. The switches should be set to the sawmill. All right. What do you think of the class 70? I know Heist is, you know, a huge fan. It's uh, Heist's um, baby here, unfortunately. Could uh, could use a better cab, but apart from that, it's a really good, really solid locomotive if you have the curves for it. I feel, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I, this is actually going to be the first time we take the class 70 to the coal mine on this server. I don't know what the, uh, the curve situation is going to be like, to be honest. I took the, um, I like to say the dev intended route to the coal mine. You know, there's like those sloping sort of hills yeah, yeah, yeah. that look like they're intended to lay rail on and uh you probably won't like all the stone foundation i did there because i'm i should have used more fill than i did but there are some corners i know that are, are probably pretty steep so we might have to watch out when we get to that point i'm gonna go chill in the caboose while you do you do all the work let me know how it goes i'm just gonna i'm not even moving what? in no. <laughs> i'm literally standing well, you know in one if we spot. don't land in the ditch i think we'll we'll be fine yeah, I mean, we should be good to the sawmill. It's it's a pretty calm trip. Can you see the caboose from there? Yeah, this isn't that long. Yeah, right? I can see. I really like this window. This is my favorite. It makes me want passenger cars so much more, you know? Just they're to... supposed to um, they're supposed to slide open. Uh, they're oh, not really? animated yet, but they're they're in frames, so they're supposed to slide open to the side, those front windows and the side windows. So. Oh, I see. But you guys don't have that in yet. It's just... Yeah, I don't have that in yet. And I do have to ask, what what was the point of the fireplace in the caboose? Is there an actual reason for it? Or is it just for the, the laughs? Of... Technically, technically, it would for, be for heating and cooking. Right. Um, but I think it's very good aesthetic. It's just a tiny detail that, you know, you can't go wrong with a couple tiny details, even if it gives no, like, gameplay advantage. Well, it I like, being there gives you a lot. Yeah, and the smoke comes out too when you actually like put the wood in. It's kind of cool. Like it's, uh, you know, it's a nice, it's a nice little aesthetic feature. I always told my buddies we should keep the caboose stacked with firewood because then it's your like emergency supply. You know, your engine runs out, you just grab your five logs from the caboose and you're good to go. I think it holds at least twelve. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually try and fill it up then. I'm gonna see. I got tons so here. Just feel there. free to yoink. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to pull into the sawmill. Uh, actually, I'm going to have to flick a switch. Um, I'm going to have to flick right. a switch coming up here. Not this one. You should be good. Once we get onto this bridge, I'm going to have to flick a switch left because we're going to go left to fill up the beam cars with 20 beams total. So that'll be seven of these cars, six of them full, and one of them with just two out of three. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to just go straight ahead to the smelter and pick up our rails. Uh, unfortunately, I still have to rebuild the sawmill. I was debating on asking you to help me rebuild the sawmill, and then I realized I have to have some amount of track laying myself just to feel like some sort of pride in my railroad, you know what I mean? So I figured we would just yeah. run trains. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't just have the devs making all my track, you know what I mean? Like, that would, that would just feel a little silly. So we're just gonna pretend like this whole section of the video doesn't exist, and, you know, we'll magically end up on the other side of the line here with uh, with a full load. It's amazing. It's this crazy thing that happens. Magic. Yeah, if, you know, we just, we go fast enough and then time travel happens and, you know, we warp to the future. All right, perfect. Yeah. We're on our way to the smelter, fully loaded with 20 beams. I'm gonna get back to the caboose. Um, one thing I was meaning to ask you, I guess, cause uh, you know, it, it's sort of come up and I don't really have an answer is what are all the lights for in the caboose? We've got like some different colored, I can't even get, oh God, I'm off the train. Okay, bye. Ooh. See you later. Flying break. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little slow. But yeah, what do all the lights mean? Like, are they just, um, you know, like boat lights left and right type deal or there's no, green, they're, red, they're white? marker lights. They're right. for, mainly for nighttime running and they okay. indicate they can indicate the direction of travel of your train. Obviously, if you have a green one on the back, it might mean that the train is moving in your direction. Typically, you have red facing 
backwards, but they also can function as class lights, like uh, the lights on the front of the the class 70, for example, are class lights. Okay. And um, the, the green indicates that it's a scheduled train. You're running on time, you're running to the schedule, and um, you're, you're like a scheduled train that you'd expect. Right. Um, red indicates that you are a second section of a scheduled train. So say a train gets too long for one locomotive to carry, or they have to split the train. Um, you know, maybe there's a second section that goes into a city and then comes out and rejoins with the main section of the train elsewhere. Right. Um, you would run red. And then white is what we call extra, and that's for mainly to apply some brake holding. Yeah, I'm about 100% mm. on the yeah. back couple cars um, here just to keep but this. The, the white lights are extra. They, it means you're an unscheduled train. You're a train that isn't um, isn't on the timetable. Right. So say like a work train would be extra. Or if a customer requested a load outside of your normal service, you know, then you'd be an extra train. Right. Uh, you're running on an extra schedule, modified version of the timetable. I guess all that kind of stuff, the lighting sort of became obsolete with all the modern communications then, right? Like this would have been back when yeah. they were still... You know, now everything, I guess they just, you know, talk to each other and say, hey, whatever, you know. Yeah, definitely. It's kind of interesting but, when you think about it, like, the number of trains that would have been running on tracks, you know, at relatively, like, high speeds, fast enough they wouldn't be able to stop, and yet they didn't really hit each other all that often because they were able to maintain these, like, timetables, you know? It's kind of impressive when you think about it. Nowadays, like, radio communication makes everything so much easier, but... It's kind of cool that, uh, you know, old school trains still got places without wrecking each other. What grade is this? Uh, it should be, I don't know. It should be like 3%, but then, you know, it has that whole, like, the bridges being laid at 3% stuff going on. So yeah. the bridge is probably steeper than 3%. But, yeah. I just I, have extra memorized, you know, values to set for break, you know, with specific locomotives. You play it enough and you just know where to put it for what grade. Right, but then wouldn't the weight of your train matter as well? Because you'd have to, like, set... Yeah, it does, it does a little, but... It's mostly the locomotive, it, honestly. Typically, I'm not running trains much longer than this, even though on the dev save, we'll run 30 car loaded consists, you know. Right. With two locomotives, but at the end of the day, you know, on my own save or other people's saves, you're not typically running over five or ten cars, so... Yeah, for me, like, I usually try and stick around 10 cars. Um, it all depends on the ratio. Like, we're running this train this length because this is, you know, a 10 to 20 ratio of products. If we needed, you know, more cars, I would just add more to fill the ratio. Because I like to keep the industries balanced. It just makes life easier, you know? You don't end up with too much of one product and not enough of the other. And then you got to run a specialty train to, to even it out. And then by right. the time you've evened it out, then then something else has run out at that industry. And Yeah, exactly. And then you're just in this never-ending loop of, like, always trying to... St I mean, I guess you could just fill one side and then go back and fill the other. But then it just it's harder to balance. It's so much easier if you Or you, just... you could just, if you had excess cars, you could just take loads and leave them uh, spotted at the industry for when they need to be emptied. True, just um, park there with, like, porters. Which is, I guess I should do that. Have you know, shunting yards at every industry and then have like a little porter there to actually do the unloading of extra materials. But yeah, I don't have and excess And this cars. train is just the train that actually brings the materials and drops them off and then picks up, it drops off loads and right. empties and picks up loads and empties. Um, but it doesn't do the, the switching operations. All right, we have 14 rails. I lied. I thought it was 13. We have 14. So we got one car we can fill here. And that's it. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what you think of my coal line. Um, there are a lot of bridges. All right, you're good. But yeah, there are a lot of bridges on my coal route, and uh, I don't feel like it's the most realistic way you would have laid that track. It just crosses the river a lot, and I feel like they would have stuck more to one side of the river and just made more curves. Uh, I did it purely because I think it looks cool, but I, I think yeah, on the realism factor... Um, when, when the name of the game is following the terrain and keeping the grade as low as possible, there are railroads like the Colorado and Southern, which built up from Golden, Colorado to, to Georgetown and Silver Plume up right. in the, uh, up in the, the center of the front range. And, uh, they followed Clear Creek all the way up and they would just cross left, right, left, right, you know, every mile or two, um, just trying to get on the most optimal side of the river. You know, oh, with the okay, most. Okay, mine might not room. be that bad then. That's kind of what I did. Mine's like a. It's a pretty constant two and a half, three percent climb the whole way there because the coal mine is actually like further up. 
than yeah. where it connects. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind of like that. It just crosses the river a lot. It's got a lot of bridges, which you know felt appropriate, seeing as how you wanted to talk about some bridges. So I do love me some bridges. And a lot of people have been bugging me to run the coal mine route. I kind of set up the route, and then I've never really like delivered products to it. I think I did once, and that was it. You know, so it's kind of nice to get more product out there. Been doing a lot of iron recently. Need more cordwood though. You'll have to get some more uh, unpaid labor to run the uh, cordwood trains yeah, for you. Yeah, pretty much. Let's just get a bunch of people. Each person has a porter with like two cordwood cars, and we just run them all day. <laughs> yeah, all day long. All day long. Everyone's got Six their porter, hours. their cordwood. Yeah. <laughs> We'll fill this thing right up. It'll be perfect. I need some switch offs though. Uh, I only really have one track. Yeah, I need some tracks to actually work with. Cause yeah. here you just have the one track all the way around in the uh, the stub like spur to dump off the cordwood. You have nowhere to stick empties, you know, and cut your train apart. Yeah, I saw in the update unload. notes, there was an update today and I saw in the update notes, you guys were talking about working on new splines and I was thinking, oh no, I gotta get my track built before new splines are done. Otherwise I'm gonna be screwed, you know? So I'm gonna have to yeah. really pick up the pace and i mean there were there were some definite improvements i don't i don't currently know if that'll break people's worlds but um we're talking about the spline length maximum that has been tested is like a third of a mile or something long right between two points so that could really uh increase performance just the less number of spine points and you get a smoother curve you know with less less points in it yeah, because that's what um, the game's loading when you're waiting for it to load, is all the different It's spots, loading right? all the groundwork in yeah. the Yeah. Um, Alright, we're good to go. Spines. Should be full speed for a while. Uh, I'm gonna go turn Two off four. the brakes, because we're gonna be basically climbing the whole way there. Um, and then we're gonna go, when we get to the top of that Y at the top of this hill, we're gonna be going left, which should already be set. And then we'll be going left at the top of another hill down towards the coal mine and then at the coal mine i have a loop at all the industries i've connected so it doesn't matter which way we come in i really need to build some more some more track though i'm gonna have to like really pick up the pace gotta do like six building episodes in a row here and get all the i only have three industries left to connect to be honest the oil field the ironworks and the refinery and those are all sort of like one track connects all three almost you know like it's not gonna be yeah the biggest thing in the world to do Oil field and uh, ironworks are really easy. Refinery can be slightly harder just because you got to move stuff uphill to it. Right. Yeah, you can see but there's a little bit not, of an elevation. It's not ridiculous. It's kind of just like the smelter, except you go up instead of down. Now, I didn't do any of the math on this train. Um, ah, yeah, we'll be fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I feel like we'll be okay. This, this we'll, is uh, really light. If we get stuck, we'll just double the hill. Yeah. But I mean, it's uh, it's a pretty light train. We're what seven cars of beams, not even fully loaded. So that's like a little under twenty thousand pounds each, one hundred forty thousand pounds, and then a car of rails is like thirty thousand pounds plus the caboose, forty thousand pounds. We're hammering up this at yeah. like seventy-five percent drag. I think we're fine. Well, there's one part that's like six percent for a very short little bit. <laughs> We'll just firewall the throttle and hope for the best. Yeah, there is one part coming up that's just like, as soon as you get across this bridge, it's 4% for a while, and then it hits a 6% section because it's a, just a really steep path. I need to redo another way to get up here, though, from the smelter that goes across the waterfall, a little more gradual, because yeah. um, this was like the original iron route, but now I just use this as a downhill, so it doesn't matter as much, you know what I mean? It's like, you're always coming down, who cares if it's 25% or whatever. You know, always could help you uh, plan that out. Yeah, well the, the yeah, I gotta I gotta do some smelter work for sure. I, I mean, I just got, I have so much track to lay. I should really just spend two years laying track. It's the, it's the next objective. We're gonna spend the next two months, guys, doing nothing but laying track. Brace yourselves, it's coming. I don't think that 6% is going to be any sort of issue. It's right here. See where that, that fill begins? Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the steep part. And it only goes, like, up to that turn and then stops being steep, so it's really... You find the sander really quick. There we go. We hear bog a little bit, but, I mean, not much. Okay, I'm going to just jump off here. Perfect. She's fighting. Yeah, it should make it. You got speed. It's actually good. It slows down just enough for me to get off and flick this switch and then hop right back on, so it's perfect. Alright, you're good. 
Here we go to the left. On the trip to the coal mine. Speaking of steep grades, the Rio Grande uh, up near Silverton, they had a spur up to a mine. I think it was seven and a half or no, it was 7.9% grade. That's um, insane. For a couple hundred feet um, up to the mine. And so you would slog up the hill at about two, two and a half miles an hour. And then coming down, you would just um, get down on your knees at the cab and pray to, to whatever higher power you believed in. Um, that your trailer you know, coming come off down the track. And you could take one car you could take one car up the hill at a time that's nuts yeah so it was like they go up loaded and come down empty or go up empty and come up uh, down up empty downloaded that's crazy downloaded sounds like the scariest thing ever like bringing loaded trains down hills is just it's always so scary to me even yeah. in this well, like you push you push a gondola you know up the hill and you get a loaded gondola or a box car full of ore and come down right you know it's a steep hill, especially back in the 1880s or 90s with their air brake technology. You yeah, know, You could easily run out of air and then just you lose your brakes. Yeah, true. That's all old school technology, too, where it was like you needed the pressure. Uh, straight to, air. To, yeah, so it's pressure clamps down, right, rather than pressure releases it or whatever. Correct. Yeah, big difference. I've got yeah, all these could bridges be raised here. Up. They could be raised up above the floodplain slightly. I'd be worried... Uh, when you get ice flows in the winter, you know, in your spring floods, but that, that would True. get smashed Wreck the by track. logs coming down. So if you, if you were doing, like, obviously you had talked about some dynamic bridges and stuff. These are all, these bridges, you can tell they're sort of big support. So if there was, like, a bridge like this, it wouldn't be this kind of a trestle, then, would it? It would be something, like, a little different if like, it was low? Um... Like what I'm modeling is is a bridge for lower heights and it's for areas with running water. So the type of bridge that we have in game is, is a post-based trestle. Right. And um, it has actual mud sills and like frame members that are on the bottom. So it's typically not used in areas where you have flowing water because it can wash that foundation away. Um, whereas the things you'd want to use in, in a river crossing like that is like a pile trestle where you drive wooden piles so basically a debarked tree down to sit on bedrock or, or a harder subsurface layer you know so then it doesn't care about the water it's driven so deep that the rock um the bedrock of the area is the foundation and the they wouldn't have all on. these like cross supports and stuff either no They'd just be it like... would just be bent span bent span bent span you know big gaps what about um like stone bridges at all. I know you have metal and wood. Is stone? It just wasn't a common thing, I guess, because it's just too much to it's build. It's a little expensive. It's just it's just expensive, and it's really it's more of the Victorian area uh, era, excuse me, than it is like 1880s, 90s, 1900. Right. Um, so I mean, I'm sure there are examples. I know of basically none. We're uh, we're climbing, by the way. It's kind of cool. You don't yeah. really notice with the class 70. Yeah, it's got so much power. Yeah, it just keeps pulling. Yeah, you just throw it at, in the corner about, you know, 35, 40. Just let it run. Oh, this is nice. Yeah, I tried to follow the river, like, as much as I could, because I just like the look of being next to the river. But you're saying, in real life, they would build this track up, like, a fair amount higher. Like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as low to the river. Uh, not necessarily, like, they would build it up a little bit, but you wouldn't want to cross the river low enough that debris could get stuck under your bridge and then right. the force of water when you have debris stuck under your bridge that water can push so hard that it pushes the bridge you know out and undermines it and just destroys it you know if something gets pinned on one side you know on the uphill side you get a big log jam um from just uh fallen timbers mm -hmm. that are washing downhill in rocks too um when you hit like spring flood season that what? could destroy your bridge. So ideally, you want it high enough so that you can clear any obstacle that's flowing, you know, anything that is in the river that's solid that might flow downhill. Yeah, that makes sense. What about, um, um, like, metal versus wood? Because, like, obviously with wooden bridges in the water, they're going to rot out eventually, right? Like a pile bridge, you have to so come cheap. back. In the era, it's so cheap. They just redo it every so often and say, screw it. Every, every you know 30 40 50 years it, it depends i mean you do basic maintenance and it's creosoted piles for a pile truss and creosoted timbers for post trestles so it's resilient to rot it's not you know rot proof but it's rot resilient right so like this bridge we're about to go over that's probably about the height they would opt for 
you know. Oh, okay, so not like minimum. crazy high, just you know, high enough. Not that crazy it... high. You just want to clear anything that might flow underneath. Right. Um, you want to be above the peak water level at the peak flow. Wouldn't that um, be crazy if that's that's your next big plan? You guys add a whole flood system and flood plains and wash out track. Oh my god. Oh god. That would be that would be ridiculous. Wouldn't that be interesting? That might be painfully interesting. That might be just yeah, too if there difficult was just for the average infinite player. track maintenance required all the time. You'd have to have oh people god, do you gotta nothing. get your maintenance of way cars out and you know yeah. maintain the track every once in a while or else, you know, you might just have a washout or you know, you have a broken rail and you derail. That would oh be gosh. like next level. That would be so much work though to maintain. Even the, the map is small. Like it's not huge. It's 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 a big map. Don't get me wrong. It takes a long time to get places. And I really like the map size. But it's not like it's you know monstrous, right? Um, but it's still big enough where it's like if you had to maintain every piece of track you laid, it would be ridiculous. Like you would spend That's all why your they time. Had dedicated crews to do it. Yeah, that would be your whole job. Would just be maintaining track. Just drive around on the server and maintain track <laughs> for everyone else. Hey, you could make a killer, um, you could have contracts and then, then players would pay you to maintain their railroads. True. You know, use it to finance your own railroad system to, uh, topple, topple the people that pay you. Yeah, competitive railroads on the same, yeah. they're supplying for the same industries, that'd be amazing. Reminds me of the days I used to play, like, uh, Railroad Tycoon way back in the day, you know? Like, the cereal box, real, or I guess it was a cereal box, but, you know, it was, like, 1998 or something, and it was just, yeah. like, you had competitive railroads on the same, you know, map, and you were trying to compete with each other and steal industries and stuff. This would be, like, the crazy, full-blown 3D version of that. Yeah. A lot of people have equated us to, like, Railroad Tycoon 3. Right. Of, like, that idea, but... 3D and like yeah. obviously we're not Railroad Tycoon 3. We're not doing like Tycoon like stocks and bonds and buying out your competitors but no um, and, and it being in first person. Competitive railroading may be coming in the future. Not not in the near future but that's something we definitely want to do is have like a co- right now the mode is basically co-op but we'd love to do like two, three, four company co-op and then you know have, have the ability to compete you know right and have contracts for um for for industries they want this many car loads a month and you know if you're the first to connect you're the first to try and get that contract and you know they're like increase their output over time based on how much you move from that industry you know mm -hmm. how often and if you don't fill your obligations they may you know uh, void your contract and look for somebody else to move to move their materials yeah, I mean, right now it's kind of nice. Like, you guys have really created just a fantastic sandbox. Um, and But it has so much potential. Like, it could go in so many different directions. And that's always, like, really, really exciting to see. And it's nice to see you guys engaging with your player base, too. So, that you know, you actually get some opinions from the community and see what would be the, the best way to take everything and, you know, what people want, right? I obviously love the co-op experience, but I don't really play with a whole lot of people. I only play with a few people every so often, just like my, my close friends, right? So it's... It's interesting. I'm sure there's people and, playing and the with like big servers. The thing about game development is you have to throw a couple things at the wall and see if it sticks. Right. So, you know, the game is always evolving. It's it's early access. It's evolving. You know, every every week or two when there's a new new update, even if it's just small, over time the game is changing drastically. So, so I know here you'll probably be like, you should have used fill. The only thing I don't like is the fill goes through the ground and comes out at the base of the mountain, right? So I guess that would be part of like procedurally generated fill and stuff, stuff that stops yeah. at the terrain. Maybe not that it snaps the terrain, because that's a little difficult, but at least snapping height-wise. So there's three or four or five different levels of height to the fill. Right. And it's picking one of those, whatever fits best. And same with your bridges the, as well. Uh, like it'll, you know, same as you go along the bridge. So I guess, I don't know if you can talk, but or not, how, do you, right now there's two bridges, there's wood and there's steel. Do you have an idea of how many bridges you want? I know there's like a list of like um, 70 engines or something, but is there like a plan I, for... I haven't sent you all the, the data or the drawings like that. And you can put that up on the screen. We had one of our users, uh, uh, error, I think 1242 on the Discord. He drew up some of our bridges in CAD, you know, when I, when I started modeling them so that we could do all the bolts right and figure out exactly what bent heights we wanted to do and how that would mesh together. Right. Um, so we wanted to do that, and I want to do a, a another procedural trestle, kind of like what we have now already. But 
it'll be something to bridge the like 12 foot to 54 or 68 feet in height. The current trestle, I think, tops out at 46 feet. And so, it's always 46 feet, no matter where. It's always 46 feet. Right. Um, you can't control gaps or anything. And we, we've come across some interesting data on how to do um, gaps, like the, the actual stringers, the bridge track ride on change in depth based on your gap size. So at 16 feet of gap, there are eight by 18s. But if you wanna have, say, 32 feet of gap, they change to eight by 24s. And you have a second support um, to support that larger um, larger stringer right. uh, over that wide gap. I know so, too, some people I've seen a dapper show me on a server where he had, um, like, I haven't done any yet. Bridges over track, right? Uh, by the way, I love mm -hmm. this valley, how deep this is. It's just insane. You're, like, on it's the gorgeous. edge of death. But uh, anyway, no, but there were these people who made, like, gaps. And to get gaps in the support, I guess they made, like, bridges in a ton of different sections of bridges all, like, strung together. So I don't know if that's something, like, are you going to have a, like, how would you even do that back in the day? Like, uh, you know, a, a train with a bridge going over it. I guess they would have just, like, put a track in between the gaps and the pilings or whatever. Like, that would be the only way to do if, it. If that gap was large enough or they would have especially designed the bridge, like what I provided, where you make the stringers thicker and you add an extra bent inset from, you know, the bridges, all the all the supports are placed on center. So it's like 14 foot on center or 16 foot on center. So you'd inset a second support by a foot in and then have that thicker, stronger uh, beam going across. So then you could do a larger gap or sometimes you would have bridges that were framed like what we have now, but they have embedded girts and stringers halfway down the bridge to make a huge gap, you know, and support that. that you know, massive, you know, 20, 30, 40 foot gap in the bridge, you know, and also equally high. Yeah, so, I guess the hard part about bridges in railroads is that a lot of them were just built very, like, the same but different depending on the situation. So it's it's hard to get a model that works for all that, right? Yeah, because I'm, I'm trying to model things off of standard known designs, but um, as much as you could provide a standard design, every use case and every... Uh, like terrain obstacle you come across is slightly different. So you got to think about, obviously every bridge is built for the gap that it's supposed to go in. It may follow some standard design procedures, but at the end of the day, I'm only making like six, uh, 12, 18, 24 and 30 foot vents, but you could have 11 foot vents and you could have seven foot vents and you could have 27 foot vents. Right. So, it, you know, it's a matter of simplifying the standard procedures down into something that's reusable while also not making every single combination there is because um, that would just take forever. Right. So I guess, do you have a plan to eventually, oh, we're going to loop around and come back through. That's perfect. Um, do you have a plan eventually to like make the ability for people to customize like where they want the stringers and gaps in their bridges? Is that possible or is it just going to be kind of sort of the same you know, people kind of roughing it with weird foundations, or is that kind of unknown at this point? Or we've we've discussed it a little bit. Um, we haven't decided on an exact system to do it, but I'm gunning to get that. You know, choose each individual bent. You know, say for the pile trestle, it's 14 foot spacing. Every 14 feet, you can choose a, a bent. You know, yeah, I... either have have the game automatically choose, or you can manually input that bent or input a stringer or say, I want girts on this segment to uh, span in between the bents lower down, or I want a gap here. Right. Um, you know, just modularly working with uh, pre-made pieces, um, stringer by stringer and bent by bent across your gap. Yeah, which would be awesome. That would totally allow you to do whatever you want in any gap. And then if the, the height of the pilings is automatically adjusting for the terrain, it would just be each bridge you build on your map would look completely different depending on like where you put it and how you set it up. It would actually be really, really cool. And it would fit It would fit your use case. It wouldn't right. be just like you see the exact same bit over and over again. You could do that if you wanted by all means, but... You right, but in my case, I'd have, like, pilings all throughout that river, and then, like, the bigger gaps would be some of the more advanced trestles and, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and there are use cases where you don't even have vents, and you you literally have your stringers ride in between two abutments to make a ditch crosser or, you know, basically an open culvert. Right. Um, and that's also a valid bridge. 
So I'm going to try unloading this and hopefully not screw it up. Should be good. You can just crawl. That's perfect. Excellent. All right. Perfect. Crawl forward to the beams. I feel like this would, would never, like, happen in real life. But I feel like in real life, when you're dropping off train loads, they would have dropped it off in a shunt yard and then just left it for the industry to deal with, right? Like, it wouldn't have been... Yeah, you would have just left the cars here and it would have taken them however long to unload them and then you would have come back to pick up the empties. Right, and then, you know, move on with your life. And they'd have, I guess, little shunting engines to, you know, deal with stuff. Well, perfect. Look at that. Everything done. Fully loaded. How much money do we have? $2,800. Not a lot, but it's pretty good. And uh, I guess we'll just head on back to the freight depot. Any last final parting thoughts? Any words of wisdom? I know it's it's hard to talk about because obviously a lot of stuff is you know coming up and you know it, the, nothing's finalized as you were saying you know it's early access so it's it's hard to say you know this that and whatever but I'm I'm excited to see more variants in track to be honest I think it's like super great the tools we have but obviously you know there's only a handful of tools it will be really cool to have dynamic bridges and stuff but uh, yeah any other final thoughts words did you get your YouTube channel up yet uh, I haven't but my my words of wisdom are. Don't do sky bridges, kids. It's cringe. Don't do, don't do those. Don't <laughs> you do mean those. where the foundation doesn't touch the ground or whatever? Yeah, don't do those. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen. All right, so I guess don't that's... Don't bridge over the forest. Kind of makes one last question. Are you going to have a max height for bridges still? Because right now you're, like, limited to the height. I guess there would um, be in real life or... The problem is the standard drawings, like, pile trestle, it's, like, between 6 and 30 feet. Right. And the four-post trestle I want to make... Uh, off the RGS, it's good for 12 to 54. There were use cases where it got higher than 54. But apart from that, only special cases went higher. And there are some examples where bridge, you know, bridges went up to 100 feet, maybe 110 or 15 feet. But that's like such a special use case. It's not a standard design. It is specific to the gap and it's hard to to make that a procedural element right That's, like, and if you make a hundred foot bridge someone's gonna come along and make a 200 foot bridge and be like oh well why does my 100 foot bridge not yeah no i i understand that well yeah 100 percent. yeah well let us know what you guys think in the comments down below thanks again peyton for helping me run the trip to the coal mine it's actually kind of nice to get this industry going now you've got some coal producing that'll actually produce like a 100 coal because it's one to two makes 10 so that'll be good that's 100 coal which means i can come up here with some hoppers sometime and uh, pick it all up. But yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye.